feel free to, if you want to move the camera angle or whatever, feel free to. All right, cool. Sorry, you're gonna to have to see the back of my hair. Um, I don't even know if there's anyone there, but you know, we're seeing it. Um, yeah, can you just introduce yourselves and what you do and why why I've managed to convince you to come here? That'd be great. So I'm uh, my name is Anders, and I work on third-party video and installation for biological diagrams called Wiki Pathways. to steal all the readers in the internet. So it's important. 
Um, so I have uh, one request. If one person would be willing to monitor IRC, if someone can take yeah. notes, that would be great. Uh, it's been a request from the remotees. I can take notes. Yeah, that would be cool. You do I think. Well, I can do IRC. Okay, okay. Well, I think we can keep it. Sorry? Yeah, last year, that'd be great. Uh, we have until, supposedly up until 2.40, whether we use all that time, yeah. So we um, There's a, the um, purple yeah. card. Oh, who's, uh, who's the remote order? So, yeah, one of the reasons um, why uh, why I'm here uh, is because uh, so I, before my current role, I was used to be working with uh, the uh, fundraising team actually doing the banner work, and there was always an idea uh, as part of fundraising that there would be some sort of uh, editor, editor engagement campaign. Uh, unfortunately, it never happened, because, partly because of time, partly because of resources, um, and also because there wasn't the infrastructure in place on Wiki to actually be able to support that kind of campaign. It's all very well and good asking people to, to edit, but if you don't have the resources and infrastructure behind that to actually take someone and, and have them move through the, the, the learning process in terms of becoming an editor, there's no point in actually doing it. And so when I came back onto the staff in last January, uh, one of the things that I really wanted to do was to actually be able to try and push forward in, in being able to have that active recruitment of read readers in becoming editors. One of the um, one of the, 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 the main difficulties is that uh, in terms of the resources that exist on Wiki at the moment, uh, most of our help pages consist of large pages of block text. Um, which is about as inaccessible as you can possibly get in terms of uh, a help page. Um, and so, uh, as well as having the proper resources on Wiki, I also wanted to kind of look into how we can actually, in terms of development, actually uh, support a reader through that process. Um, and so, one of the, the, the few things that I really want trying to achieve is the understanding that Every person who is an editor now was at some point a reader because it's the only way that you can discover the projects. And so uh, there is a, a, what, I, what I like to describe as a continuum in terms of being an, a reader and becoming an editor to becoming an old and bitter member of the community that I now see myself as and how we can help that person progress in that, that discovery and at each stage being able to provide them the necessary resources, the necessary tools and support, whether automated or by individuals. And so what I'm hoping is that going forward, you know, not just in the short term, but over the long term, that there is a, a higher level of collaboration, particularly between the reading and editing, editing teams, in being able to support that continuum as people progress through. It also means that it will actually enable um, other teams to actually do active recruitment. Um, there is always this hesitancy when it comes to active recruitment of, of editors that we will flood the community with you know, disruptive edits, disruptive people, and then you actually end up harming the, the very community that you're trying to support and grow. And so um, what, I, what I wanted to do was to try and ensure that when we go to the community and propose we'd like to recruit X number of editors or grow your community by X amount, that rather than fear and trepidation, there is you know, uh, positivity around the idea and that there is an understanding that this is something that will be successful rather than being disruptive to, to the project. Um, and so kind of what I wanted to do was to try and, firstly, I think that as an organisation, as a movement, we need to get a better understanding of, of this flow as someone passes from step to step to step. 
and also to understand at each stage what is the threshold to becoming, you know, uh, you know, a, a proto editor, a new editor, someone who's very competent at editing. How does someone become a member of the community? Now, some of these were looked at, particularly the latter stages, in terms of the editor engagement uh, experiments that were done several years ago. A lot of them stopped, though, however, at actually transitioning someone from being a reader to becoming an editor. Uh, it, in fact, actually, if you look at their page, it is the one item that was never looked at, was never reached. And so that's what I'm hoping that we'll be able to kind of at least talk through, discuss what people feel are the issues, what are the tools that we need further down the line, and whether, whether there is the potential for work, energy, and effort actually being put into this going forward. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what I came up with. Basically, it is someone on the planet who doesn't even know who we are, who doesn't even know who we exist. They find a link, whether on social media, or they come across us on Google, or whatever, and they discover our projects, and suddenly they're now a reader. At some point, that person will realise that you can edit. And on the previous slide, I mentioned that 50% of our readers don't realise that we are actually a project that you can actually edit yourself. And it's a lack of understanding, it's a lack of education in terms of our readership. 20% of our readers don't even know that we're a non-profit which means that we're doing really badly considering how much that we you know, flood pages with fundraising banners, et cetera, et cetera. And so the, the first step is that there needs to be a better education of our readers about how we do that, how do we tell our story of who we are and what we're all about. And obviously, after the reader understands, they discover the edit button and they, they get to the page. And this is where you know, they will either blank the page, you know, to decide that, you know, President Obama was X or Y, or you know, just simply, uh, no, it's fine. There's nothing really worthwhile on there anyway. Um, and or you know, or, or to you know, suddenly write that you know, the population of San Francisco is one because they're experimenting. They're trying to see how the changes that they make within that window suddenly become reflected in the real world because that's how most people start discovering that wow, I can actually change things and suddenly realise that the the, the, the actions that take place on this, you know, almost seemingly disparate page, particularly, you know, prior to the visual editor coming on board, it's slightly different in that when people are making changes, they're, they're making changes to an almost finished product. Beforehand, they didn't. Um, and then obviously when they realise that changes can be made and are reflected in the real world, suddenly they will either stop doing that or they will go forward and make more changes and hopefully over time, as they become more and more competent and more and more satisfied by the changes that they made, they eventually become a member of the community and then they stick around and they never leave. And so what I, what I want to know is what people's opinions are about what are the, uh, the difficulties at each of these stages, what do we already know um, about people's behaviours as they're trying to transition from one to the other, and what can we do to support that and what do we need to do to be able to support that. Um, and from this point onwards, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to turn it into a conversation, and I'd like to see if, what people's thoughts are, what people's opinions are. What are your opinions of what we're already doing? Um, can we do are there any significant differences between this topic and another topic, which I know has been the subject of many discussions over many years, which is how do we gain more than editors? I mean, because I guess you're saying that all, which is true, that all that all our new editors come from people who were readers. So I mean, this is, you know, and not saying that this is a bad thing, but that this is just seems like a restatement of that same issue. I, I think it is, yeah, and, 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 and unashamedly so. Um, I think that you know we we put a lot of effort into supporting our editor communities, and we put a lot of effort in supporting the reader experience. But at the moment, there is a gap in terms of supporting that transition from one to the other. The visual editor supports people who are discovering that, that editing ability, but uh, on the very basis that you know, if 50% of people don't even know that they could edit, um, how do we go about actively supporting those people in their discovery of being able to contribute? Um, 
some of the, the, the gap is, is non-technical. So for example, I mentioned that you know, um, we have uh, help pages that are essentially encyclopedic entries. You know, they consist of hundreds of thousands of words. That is in no way contributing to people actually coming bored, except the very people who like to read thousands of words about how to do one action. Um, and so we, there is a lot of work that can be done by non-technical individuals. However, the, it requires a degree of, of uh, technical contribution from, from the foundation in being able to support the actions that, that contribute to someone being able to do something. For example, having, you know, uh, and I mentioned it in an earlier session, if someone is trying to add a reference or someone is adding something that isn't referenced, because for the most likelihood, if they've only got one or two edits, they don't know how to add a reference. There should be uh, subtle and useful interventions in that process that allow someone to progress to the next step, that allow someone to gain a piece of knowledge and to be able to be successful without having their wrist slapped. And I think that this, like, I'm not coming from this from the angle of trying to halt the editor decline, or trying to reverse it, or trying to expand the community by X members. This is simply supporting an experience that users are already having that is already dissatisfying. And making that an enjoyable experience. How are we understanding So I, I would normally point to Aaron Hafika or uh, Millimetric, but who currently on the CNRP. Um, they, my understanding is that they that they are steadily building up more and more metrics by which to be able to judge and assess how people make that journey. Um, there was a lot of work, a lot of research. Um, and actually, Project Oreo, as I unflatteringly call it, has a page that links to a lot of research, a lot of which was done by the E3 team in terms of the latter half of that experience. What happens when people get vandalised, what happens when people get thanked for edits and all of that stuff that has already resulted in some of that work. I don't know how much research has been done in terms of that transition. Um, I, I've, I've, I've tried to find as much as I can and there are, like Wikimedia France and Wikimedia Deutschland, they're again starting to look into this Wikimedia France already runs an online MOOC, but that is outside of Wikipedia. It, it takes them away from the experience that they're having and requests them to sign up to something, etc. Um, so there, there, are, there are some experience, experiments in terms of trying to support and better understand that. Is that a No, I don't think so. I believe so. Yeah, we have, we have, we have a lot of feedback in the, yeah, there's work and the research there's also the experience of editors who are working with the foundation uh, for instance with the uh, yeah for instance they are involved with the, in our communities so we know uh, sometimes some experiences that have been done with new members we talk before for example for each month and uh, yeah making a workshop in their lives just in order to answers to people about it's a good idea, what are the media projects and how they work. And, uh, I have a lot uh, of feedback from people with very yeah, with a lot of different reasons why they don't want to contribute. Yeah, other people say, yeah, I can I know I can contribute, so that's not the case where people talk about they can think of it. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of people who are not contributing because uh, one don't feel legitimate to do that, even if they are uh, working in a university and they are the, the top, uh, yeah, they have the most important knowledge about the particular topic. There is also that culture of people who, yeah, at school, you learn something, you work alone, don't cheat on other people, don't count on other people, just do things wrongly. That's the case in France. Uh, I don't know about other countries, so for them it's really difficult to go to a page and then work 
from the baking that doesn't create that of someone else. So yeah, no, most people don't know they can work together. And, uh, there's also yeah, I guess something online. So that's only for people who have technical background. So they don't feel like some legitimate to click on edit because that may be too complicated. They think it can be too complicated. And uh, also on most projects, people don't know what they can do. Yeah. Basically, so yeah. Okay, I don't have enough. Yeah, there's also yeah, they don't think they have enough time to write big articles, but they don't need to discover the fact that they can just type all just at the page or at the definition of the data. So yeah, there's a lot of lot of multiple ways to do that. It's a big big field. But I guess are we are we are we focused on all of those things? Because that's that's, or is this just more narrowly about for the people who are already making this transition, how can we make it better? Because that is a, that is a much narrower thing than how do we get more? I, I think I think the first thing is understanding simply what the journey is, <laughs> because through that you will then be able to identify different areas in which in which work can be done to improve particular experiences. Um, you know we. In terms of you know the editing experience, there is a lot of work in terms of, of what a person's editing experience is. But in terms of um, how someone realizes that there's an edit button even there, and what even does that do? Given that a lot of people think that if you, you know only editors, uh, the people who are paid, it is a, a common anecdotal thing. That I, certainly from my experiences, when I say I, I write with Wikipedia, so I don't get paid. I'm like no. Um, and so, just by simply understanding the journey, you can chip away at different bits and pieces. Like, this isn't one massive thing that you can fix in one stretch, but it is something that, if we, if if we if we if we have that better understanding, then we can work out what's needed. There is a question from IRC. Can you please tell? to take notes. Oh, there, there is. Yeah. On the yeah. Yeah. There is an official tab button. Uh, oh, this yeah. is not the official. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is the? What's the official one? Uh, so if you if you go to the program for the oh. session, there is a text session. Not okay. here. Let's so say what's this? Copy the template below into a new. E Maybe there's a pre designated name. Is there a name up there? Like that one and then yeah. copy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'll, all right, I'll, I'll look at that up. So I will now yeah. I will do the. It's easier. Yeah, it's going to be easier. So, so yeah, I, I, this is, in some ways, yes, this is a rehash of work that's already been done. Uh, but that work didn't cover the whole thing. And as far as I'm concerned, I think well, there is a big area that we didn't do any work. Well, it was, I think a huge amount of work was already yeah. done. And people realized the problem was very intractable. And there were a lot of, a lot of people who could be objective to the solutions that yeah. people were trying. So I feel like this is such a can of worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, just my feeling on like reopening is kind of like, I'm glad people want to do this, but I was very pessimistic. Oh, no, I, and I, and I, I, I recognize the pessimism. Um, but for example, that like there has been work that has been done that has resulted in uh, you know negative community um, feedback. But that doesn't mean the work should shouldn't have been done and should continue to be done. Um, I think that in terms of editor recruitment, it is something that is going to inherently require the communities to actually be a part of that process because there will be fears about disrupting the already existing groups that are there. Um, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at it, even though it's, it's difficult, challenging, and potentially controversial. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Does anybody have any, any questions before I start? So, um, on kind of touching a little bit on some of that topic, um, one area that could affect this, and I don't have a solution for it, but I'm trying to think of solutions. Um, if we look at uh, the way 
a society uh, tells different people different messages. Um, uh, U.S. society tells people that look like me that uh, my voice is valuable and should be heard. So then I don't really have any inhibition to just jump in and start editing. Um, the U.S. society often gives a different message to people that don't look like me. Um, and I'm trying to think of ways that would be more effective in bringing in talented people regardless of whether they look like me or not. And that's a question for the room, too. So different. The, the, there, are, there are different. There are differences in terms of how uh, different community groups handle that ongoing support. Some are good at it. Most, as you say, it stops once you leave the door. Um, and I think that that is, given that that is probably actually one of the, the, the biggest ways in which we currently interact with our readers. Um, so we have the fundraiser where we ask them for money. The other thing is real life events. Um, and takes the form of editor forms or conferences and things like that. But at the moment, there is no there is no universal way of being able to bring someone in, provide a support on the day, and then have them follow up with lessons. Now that could be in the form of some sort of MOOC system or whatever that is actually part of the MediaWiki software itself. That someone can go along to one of these days. They can have people that can train them and take them through. You know standardized process and if they need more support they can continue that in their own time but there is an easy way to be able to identify who the person was that trained you on that day and things like that. Uh, that's uh, that's a part of the problem. 
that's the, there's a bigger problem because there is a lot of workflows, so we need to build by a single each workflow. So that what research has been done is usually in very specific one workflows, which is good, since there is all a bit distinct, but it also present presents many good pictures. Picture, sorry. So yeah, it's really hard to research, especially for readers, because it's really difficult to find the readers. And I have a note about that, yeah. A lot of research is done for practical reasons, I know, in English. And uh, there is a lot of readers with sometimes very different background, cultural background, uh, which can be targeted because of that language. I mean, just, just, just to come back and, and, and to join. Oh, just, to just to finish. Uh, uh, we are researching how the project work. And that's mostly with already established users. And the best we can, we could come up with um, was to just ask people directly what they were doing. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, there, there are many, many ways of of assessing the user experience and. You know the, the various steps that people go in terms of discovery of different functionality and what their experiences are. So, you know, there are many ways of doing that, but we we do need to. There needs to be a, a systemic and complete overview of one individual's progress and experiences as they learn and discover how to. I mean, like it, it is like we can we can do very. Um, very generic studies at various different stages, but in terms of how one person develops and how another person develops, they will be completely different experiences. And and how someone, you know, how does someone become a media wiki a volunteer media wiki developer? How do they actually get into that? It's the same kind of question as to how someone becomes an editor or how someone, you know. And then when you become an editor, you will then branch off into many different areas of the project. You will go into New Page Patrol. You will go into Glam, or you know, you may decide that you actually can't stand working for you know working on the on online stuff, but you start branching off into other areas. Like this is this is a much bigger question in terms of individual journey through our whole movement. But the fact is, is that the first steps of how they how they come in that is that's when you have the door, and the truth that you cannot support people to come in if you don't have any of the resources there. Like, there's no point in me, you know, shouting on a street corner with a, a, a banner saying, please come join our community. Because I know that that would work. Like, I, it, it is simple numbers. Like, the more you turn up, you know, open yeah. the floodgates, the more people that you'll get. But that cannot be done if, if we don't understand how we need to support those people further down the line. Because otherwise people are just going to, at the very first stage, go, you know what, I'm not interested. Like we, we have inherently uh, self-selected individuals in the community who like to find how to do things in a challenging way because that's why they're there. People who, who do self-discovery with thousands of words of pages of, you know, or, or through learning from other pages and copying and stuff like that. But, but that, we, that's not the process that everyone will follow. No, it's no, exactly. It's like, a very yeah, yeah. Path. yeah. But we, the, the, there needs to be, my argument is that there needs to be good, solid, and, and comprehensive research of all of those different parts. Yeah, that, that was the point. Yeah, I mean, research is about blockers, multiple yeah. paths. Uh, has, has there been any uh, discussion or anything of maybe looking at collaborating with universities, especially universities that might serve? Uh, primarily focus on serving people that don't look like me and kind of engage like what kind of, you know, find somebody who's doing a master's project and do something like that. Do you mean as editors or as researchers? Um, the, like, it could be a master's thesis on the experience of real people maybe at one of these universities um, for that pipeline basically of becoming an editor and what happens. I mean, the, the last one that I know of was the Summer of Research, which was 2011, 2012. I think that's where Dario and Aaron and somebody else who's in the company on the top of my head. 
But that's how, thick, that's how they came in. I don't know if that is work that is still going on, but there is precedent for having that kind of research being done at a, an academic level. But I mean, um, to be, able to, the, to be able to have the resources to provide those people to do the tools to do that kind of research is the same, the same motivation for us to be able to do our job in terms of what is working because you need to be able to measure not just the interactions that someone has, but as you change that experience, and, it's, and that's, just, that's just standard AD testing, but you need, we, we need to know what we need to measure because we don't know necessarily what steps people are stopping. Um, because that's how you that's how you learn how to improve that, that experience. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any other questions? Is anyone interested in working on this in the future? Is the question. And bear in mind that it won't be my job, but I'm convinced someone. <laughs> Which is the other thing, and that's actually my my, my final request is I like this isn't this isn't going to be my project. But this, this this is something that needs to happen, and I do need people who are willing so to. So this project is going. Oh, are you saying you have? You're just throwing it out there. I, basically, I'm throwing it out there, and like I would love to be involved. And there are things that I am going to do myself that I can do within the role of like, well, my job. I think the, one of the issues is it, it's not people. All everybody agrees generally. Like ah, uh, this is a thing that needs to happen. This is a big challenge. There's a lot of work that's gone into it. But well, it, so, no, so but that it, in itself, I'm not sure. But a it, it, it was a, it was a challenge, and it has been identified. It's just the the and work that was done. It was felt that the that, that wasn't yeah. the change that came out from that wasn't huge, and I think right. that because we were looking at we were so, looking at a different area. In terms so of I think the, if you want to create movement on it, you have to do something more specific. Like instead of just talking about the whole problem generally, saying mm -hmm. this varies. I want to focus on this very specific thing. Mm -hmm. So somehow narrow down the problem right there, and I think that might focus people's attention on that part of the problem. Or find somebody with a lot of resources who has a lot of space to take ownership of this. Like if you could convince, you know, give the editing department a lot of space to focus on this, mm -hmm. something like that. But just raising the issue, I think, the issue is great. Sorry, this is just my guess. No, no, no. I, 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 I accept. I, I, I accept the pessimist. I don't. I don't question that. Um, but at the same time, I, I come here with a degree of honesty that I know I'm not going to be able to solve this problem. There are things yeah, like that is, that is I'm. I'm working, and I'm, I'm looking to work in reader engagement in terms of how we can actually speak with our readers. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that through what is the blunt force tool, the central focus, because that is the tool I have in my disposal. But. Um, I think that there will be lessons that will come from that, and I hope that will lead to further work rather than me kind of aimlessly wandering through the night, which is what I will be doing for essentially. So it sounds like what you're looking for is some sort of owner of that process where you identify the different steps. Um, essentially, yeah, I think that there will be, I, I think that there's research to be done. Who would be? Who would you think would be the natural person to do this? Um, if you can't, but the, the, the research. The reason, yeah. And what could we, who are not part of the research, could do? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, so I don't work in the engineering department. So I don't. Briefly, yeah. Uh, like I've, I've been having, like I've basically, I've been having lots of conversations with lots of people. Like I've had a chat with Toby, I've had a chat with Trevor, um, I've had a chat with Katie because currently Central Notice sits under her, and there are things I would like to see happen in terms of making Central Notice a better communication tool. Um, you know, I've had chats with Melody Kramer, who may or may not be on IRC, um, who has done previous work in terms of onboarding people. Uh, I've had communicate, I've had chats with people in the community department who are um, people like Chris Schilling, for example, who worked in the tea house, and, and Jonathan Morgan, who worked in the tea house. People who, again, have experience and have desire to improve them. 
it is now, it's just that now I'm coming to a point whereby I'd like, I, I want to move it forward. Um, and so essentially, shamelessly, uh, pleading for support from people, essentially. Um, and working out how we, how we can move it forward so there are actually some positive outcomes, rather than me just aimless talking to people. Um, and also, that's a, I mean, there is a page, and I would love that if people have ideas in terms of what they think that should be done, like, it's a very empty page at the moment, but please go and, and add stuff to it and, and whatnot. Um, and there will be further conversations, but it was just kind of seeing, first of all, anyone would show up in the room. But, just as well. Um, if that's it, I will let you all go to find something far more interesting. Um, I'm interested in um, following up what um, Carolyn mentioned in the Do you think there might be some kind of partnership with librarians that would be fruitful? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I can speak for all librarians. I can speak to places that I work as librarian. There's a huge interest in, you know, Maybe worthwhile to talk to the DPLA. Also, they, they kind of came onto the scene pretty fast and set up a lot of community hubs and really got the trust and buy in from a lot of small library systems and small librarians. Um, how to reach out and care about. There's also there's the Wiki of Library group. Um, they go to ALA every year. That's like, it's my first time ever talking to someone who worked at the foundation was at the American Library Association conference. Um, that might be a nice place to do outreach and, and talk to people who work on that project. Also, we keep glam. Um, they work with librarians all the time, too. So, I mean, yeah. with the PM libraries have a lot of connections. Mm -hmm. and um, and I mean, the, like the, 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 the Wiki Education Foundation, which is literally around the corner, yeah. and I, I'm, I need to go and actually see them at some point. I mean, they are doing a lot of work in terms of actually using Wikipedia as, a, you know, as an education tool. Um, and there will be lessons to be learned from that that we'll need to feed into this because um, they're, they're probably one of the groups that are the most hands on in terms of actually understanding that process from an education point of view. And I would love, I would love to see some sort of um, MOOC or however, you know, some sort of progress tracker that actually follows your, you know, your abilities as you progress as an editor and that provides training materials within the experience on Wikipedia because one of the issues that I have with a lot of the, the, the current methods of teaching, it either requires you to be in a physical place or it requires you to be taken away from your current user experience, which means that you're no longer on the project and you're already going to be losing 90% of participants just by doing that. If that experience can be provided on Wiki within the media the software, then it, you, already you're going to be you know, drastically improving the uptake and success rates of people doing that. Um, so, yeah. um, I mean, if I were putting myself in the shoes of thinking of being a librarian and I get a request from somebody from the actual uh, Wikimedia Foundation asking for feedback, um, if they ever have things like, you know, librarians welcome to have for incoming students, um, orientation programs and stuff, mm -hmm. and if, uh, the librarians, if you ask them for feedback, I, I would imagine they would be very happy to share their feedback. And I, I'm assuming that most of the feedback will be, particularly if they try to use the existing online resources, mm -hmm. that it's just simply, the barrier to entry is just too high. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, 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 I recognize there is a lot of non-technical work that needs to be done to work alongside any efforts from technical have you seen the key hubs? Yes, I mean that's and that's why I know, you know Jonathan Morgan and Chris Schiller. And obviously that's the first experiment in terms of being able to try and support those new editors as they're coming through. But the trouble is with that, and this is something that they all admit themselves, it doesn't scale. Because it I mean, there was a talk earlier on about um, edit review. And Aaron Hafka said, well, there's only about ten people actually doing that. I think the tea house there's about ten or twenty individuals. But those individuals, they can only do that one-to-one -one support 
for a few people. And that's because they're having to do it because the actual resources to help support people don't exist. So they're having to provide a support that essentially replaces you know, an entire onboarding process. Um, and, and ultimately that's what we, that's what we need. Because then you can start, you know, you can start integrating the existing training that we're doing in the real world with that, and that can become alive. But at the moment, everybody's trying to do their own thing, uh, and re literally everybody is trying to reinvent the wheel in every country, in uh, every language, because everybody thinks that they have their own cool idea about how to do that. And admittedly, I'm suggesting that exact same thing, and I don't, I, I, you know, I'm not ignoring the irony. Of but the reason why they're all doing their own thing is because there's, there's nothing there to start. So. And is your main focus on things that could be done on Wikipedia itself? Or um, are, are you also looking for direct outreach to uh, organizations? The direct outreach is, is already happening. We already do that work with, with partnerships with GLAMs and education, et cetera, et cetera. So that's already there. Um, this is to provide that online equivalent to it. Because the online equivalent will scale. Um, yeah, just uh, notes. That, yeah, there's also a lot of processes that we don't know about of the project and the Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know if there are some initiatives in order to help people to get and, and, and there, there is a, a big potential in those projects. Yeah. And, and there is like there, there is a separation that would need to occur between what is consistent across every media wiki project with under you know the Media Foundation umbrella. Um, but the, once you move on from a technical point and you start going into policies about you know, how you write an article you need to make sure that the, any system that you develop allows each individual community to select, to tailor that, but to give them the framework within which to develop it. So one item that we had some success with on our, our wiki was uh, for people who are not um, PhD active biologists, they would often feel hesitancy to get involved, but there are projects that are totally a, a motivated high schooler mm -hmm. could uh, contribute. And um, one area that we had a lot of success with was uh, um, bringing in an uh, organized group of high schoolers mm -hmm. and maintaining contact with this group of high schoolers over time. Um, but then you do run into the scaling issue, but uh, having a, a cohort or a group of people has been successful for us. But, but, but yeah. No, no, all I was to say is, I mean, I, you know, we already do the first bit, but we aren't doing the follow-up, which was to, to, to come back to the point of the very on is you Going to a session is one thing, but it's, it is maintaining that, that contact and being able to provide support. But you need to do that scalably online as well. Um, because otherwise, you, you, again, there are only so many volunteers and there are only so many groups. So many volunteers that are not sure. Well, yeah, there aren't so many volunteers. Because, That's yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that people contribute to the Wikipedia project because it's a selfish, yeah, it's oh, a yeah, selfish yeah, yeah. project for them. Yeah. I do that because it's fun. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, That's I don't care about other people. But how about like uh, uh, teachers or professors? Could they be uh, like uh, to help the scaling? I mean, that, that is essentially what the Wiki Education Foundation is essentially aiming to do, mm -hmm. is, is doing that recruitment through, but doing, doing that through university courses, so they actually teach people how to write Wikipedia articles through university courses. Um, and so there, there, is material, there are already real life materials that are already there. Um, but that is, the again, the you will only ever be able to make con maintain contact with X number of professors. Uh, there comes a point whereby, you know, unless you start growing an entire organisation around doing that support, which is essentially what the Wiki Education 
a little bit longer. Um, they can only do that so much. And so the, the whole point behind what I'm trying to push for is that doing it online, having that whole process online um, is far more scalable than anything that currently we are doing in real life. Um, because, you know, you, you, the, 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 if, I'm, if I'm interested in editing, I'm a reader of like, the app or whatever, or just looking on my phone. I'm not. I'm probably not going to go to the library to yeah. learn how to edit. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Um, but if there's onboarding information or like you know tutorials or I don't know what you're envisioning or what you know, the data would suggest, but if there's some some other way to do it just seamlessly right on my phone, like oh you can edit. I And there have, there have been some efforts to try and do that. Like there, there is a um, create an art of the wizard, which the, the, the concept is similar to what I might envisage, but it is done at such a basic level. Like it, it is done with you know, wiki marker, with you know, like you click a button, it's not an actual button, it just hyperlinks you to further down the page and stuff like that. Like it's very basic. That is kind of what I may, you know, I would maybe like to see. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert in the um, But the, the, the trouble is, is that you know, the, the, there have been some efforts at a very basic level, but there is only so much you can do, you know, within Wikimarker and trying to. But the thing is, is that the end result is always, and I come back to this from earlier. The end result is always all text. Um, and, and trying to trying to provide a learning experience and trying to provide an educational experience is is you know there are whole websites dedicated to that. Uh, I mean, I would love to see some sort of equivalent of what Code Academy does within a media wiki environment for media wiki in terms of marker or the visual editor of the web. Um, like that would be fantastic because then someone actually. Have some sort of progress, but the, the aim is that they should always be actually contributing. Like, you know, apparently I'm ten percent proficient in Spanish, but you know, not actually. Like, it, it needs to be. We need to make sure that it's people learning f f and actually learning, and actually contributing, and not simply for the sake of it. Which is, but that is again, it's a whole other thing that comes into that. Another reason why we need to do this video wiki and we can't rely on community support is that. The Wikimedia Foundation supports around 800 wikis. The number of wikis that have a community would be enough to have a group that can actually work with newcomers are very small. I would say 10. Yeah, more than 700 out of these 800 wikis don't have a community that can put a few volunteers looking off editing to concentrate on onboarding newcomers. Oh, yeah, I mean, we have wikis where there's one person that does everything. Yeah. Because there's a, because, I mean, yes, okay, there is so little activity, it only requires one person. But you, you couldn't then take that one person and just have them do it. But e even a medium sized yeah. which media wiki don't really have the resources to even handle a small group of persons if you need constant guidance. This need to be able to happen automatically. You need good, good ways for people to have an onboarding experience doesn't require a lot of time for someone else. And, and actually that applies not just on, on Wiki, but in real world, like, we have, yes, we have chapters that have volunteers who can go and do all of this stuff in certain countries. But, you know, you, there will be some countries whereby there may be one or two or three volunteers, and they're trying to do work for an entire country. Um, and although they may be able to do that in, in you know, a school, or maybe two schools at first, and yes, there is hope that that will grow and that will get bigger and scale up. But the, the reality is that it, it, it's very difficult to do that and do that successfully. Whereas if you can provide the tools and the you know, basic summary of how to, to, to progress as an editor, then it, it lessens the need for 
resource limiting factors uh, other than money and development time. But you know, that's a problem for them. Skin that would be like a really conversational style, or some of the. Uh, if I look at some Wikipedia articles, it also they have like citation errors, or they'll say things like that. But uh, have you looked at doing any user studies where you ask people like, what do they think of some of these little tags that might contain incorrect data? To be honest, I have no idea. I mean, I do not know. If, I don't know if there have been usability studies in terms of all of the crappy banners that, you know, get put on articles, it's like, this, this article has been referenced, this article is a new current event, this article is blah, 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 like five templates, like, I don't know. I mean, there, there, there is a general desire that that kind of stuff is avoided. Um, but I mean, I know that the reading team are looking at, like, micro-contribution stuff um, through the Wikipedia app, which I think is, is, um, it's probably the, the most, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know, there's a word, it's great. Like, it's good and it's new and it's, you know, interesting and I think there, will, there is a lot of potential for that kind of work. Um, and that is, that is one, it is one step, essentially. You know, another route, another entry. Um, and it, you know, it will become, you know, a whole new pathway, hopefully, to people contributing. Um, that will get back understood. So, you know, uh, I think. Yeah, that was the question for you from your previous comment. Uh, the question is Are editors the right people to train new editors? Uh, that burden on them, it may not be a task they want to do or a task that suits them. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, one of the, one of the key things in, in anything that the foundation does is never assume that someone is going to actually want to do the work that you'd like them to do. Um, and, and it comes back to, to, to a few points. One, that there may be only 10 people that want to actually do this, in, in which case, you know, you, you can't expect that suddenly there is going to be a whole new community of people that are actually want to do your new cool thing, um, because that's something that we've fallen afoul as an organisation in the past. Um, there was another point that has skipped my head, but I think I made earlier. Can you repeat the question? The question was, are editors the right people to train new editors? Oh, and yeah. There is a debate in our lives about that. Yeah, and the, the other... Like facilitating, facilitators' lives, and the, 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 so the, the video. Yeah, so the other thing is, um, comes back to the whole self-selection thing that I, that I mentioned. We have a community that is self-selected at being able to do, you know, deal with, you know, high barriers of entry. Uh, and therefore, they are not necessarily the right people to teach people how to edit because there are lots of bad habits that come with that. I think the next time um, of you may be interesting, you know, about processes that we can have to teach people. Yeah, and I might. Something else to teach about something that person doesn't know about can be interesting to have some good reasons. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, and, and obviously, I mean, there, there, there are even possibilities that, uh, you know, culturally that there will be different methods of entry into the communities uh, and that from as you, as, you, as you people coming in from different countries will react to our processes and our systems in different ways um, and so it's not even a case of what will work on the English Wikipedia will work across multiple languages and we know that can be the case yeah. there's, um, there's some previous experiences of things done yeah, yeah. Not yeah, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I mean, um, are editors necessarily the right people to be developing all of that? Probably not. Uh, and that's an okay thing. I mean, there are some people who will be interested. Um, but I, I don't think there should be an expectation. But it comes to, if, if people think that this is a, a, an important enough point, then we bring in the expertise to the movement to be able to do that and actually have people within the organisation who specialise in in doing that kind of onboarding, but, um, in the same way that we bring people in to, you know, help with documentation, because just because you're a good developer doesn't mean that you're you're good at documenting your code. I know that. Yeah, um, and so it's 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 the same it's the same kind of 
idea. And if, if we want to be able to build those, those kinds of learning experiences, like not only do you have to build the tool, but you have to actually build the, the, the process within which people are learning, which requires specialists. That's why we have so teachers. We have 10 minutes left. Oh, wow. And there is a session awesome. on action items. Do we have any action items we've identified? Can we identify it on this session? I don't know if this would count as an action item, but just kind of something back to what you were saying earlier about uh, reading team doing some kind of contribution projects. Um, I think most of linked to the community concept we have for like, like the top five ideas that we have for different types of content contributions that you can do. Um, and so we have an idea of like allowing users to add um, images to items Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, you know there definitely is room for providing different experiences to different types of users, um, but obviously, like then you're know, like multiplying the amount of work that the team has to do to provide any experience three or four times as you try to cater for each individual experience. Um, I think that like one of the one of the ideas that I wanted to start looking into in terms of what I can do in terms of the central business is trying to look at how many people, you know, when they make their first edit, how many people are interested in further materials, like trying to support them in terms of, you know, their first edit, their first 10 edits, their first 100 edits. After 100, you hope that, you know, they're pretty much going to continue experiencing the site in their own way, and, and that leaves the bounds of what I think this will sort of focus on. Although that is still important, because it comes into what the actual editing team then does that they have transitioned into being an editor. Um, I think that, yeah, th th there, are, there are key steps that you can nurture them at, um, that you can provide that targeting messaging in terms of, we need you to do this. Um, if you want to learn how to do it, here's a quick guide. A very simple, not an entire encyclopedic entry. But that's where I came down in terms of providing actually, you know, within the interface, having help prompts and stuff like that. And actually, I mentioned earlier on about having the ability to detect what the user is trying to do within their editing experience. So if you think that they are trying to add a reference or add a link or stuff like that, to be able to provide, it looks like you're trying to do this, you know, here's just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, so, yeah. It's, yeah, it's quite possi it gonna be possible soon to identify what someone Tries to do. For example, yeah, you know, it's it's possible with the to predict what someone wants to do on an article based on what he has that person has already done before. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if that possible for technical things. For instance, if someone's having one, two, three, four, five pictures, you can identify that person wants to create a gallery. Not sure. But, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, things like that. But, but I mean, that's when you start, I mean, that is very much heavily in terms of being an editor. Um, and, you know, once they start working out how to add multiple pictures and they're, you know, they're all properly formatted, if we can get someone to add a picture 
I feel that that's what the aim of this should be, not all the way down the road. That because that starts wading into a, into a, an, a team that already exists and is already doing work. This is this is meant to be very much focused in that transitionary period, if that makes sense. Which will include being able to suggest some of that, and I would hope that it could be used more. But again, that's a random idea. Or it could even be like a, in each paragraph had the option to provide some kind of response, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, smiley face, frowning face, kind of a uh, yeah, some way for people to give some uh, feedback. And yeah, then <laughs> basically about whether a uh, paragraph is correct, and if they if they take the initiative to approve or disapprove of a paragraph to be correct, that could be in, uh, that could lead them you into correct. When someone is tagging something. No, if I'm viewing an article, a paragraph. So we we have we have we have what's called the article feedback. Too. Yeah, I don't even uh, know. Uh, yeah, I was asking for specifics in order to. Yeah, I, I, I so we not the whole article, just like even one paragraph. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, so all I would say is based on our previous experience, trying to do that kind of thing, uh, it, it it wasn't as great as we would have hoped. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the benefits and gains from that, but that is that is that is that is encouraging someone reinforcing the idea of them being a passerby, um, which it's a very low cost. And then once they've done some investment in yeah, but but I th I think it's I think that rather than ha having someone you know going yay or nay to build just some people on the liking post, no, this is shit or this is all lies or whatever. Um, which is yeah, essentially what happens. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, that there's a consistency there and that's these Yeah. Because because one, once you once you know once you hand over to because that just becomes more brutal in terms of the way that, that people normally act. Whereas contributing is results in a net benefit. Like people actually editing articles. The reason why Wikipedia exists is because humanity somehow when they're giving to something, there is a results in a net benefit. Um, something that when you, you when someone is a bystander, they're not um, they're not emotionally attached, they're not emotionally involved in that. Whereas if they're actually contributing to something and that they are, are are aware that that thing will become public, it actually makes them more. Well, I would hope it would make them more invested. I'd encourage you to look at Yelp reviews of national parks, like. <laughs> People will rate a uh, bagel store higher than will rate Yellowstone National Park. It's just like it's so easy on the internet to, to throw out an, an opinion on yeah. something. I think uh, I think there's maybe a distinction between rating versus say you see something in a paragraph that you're thinking maybe doesn't look correct. Yeah. And like bug reporting. So that is one of the actual like, the ideas that we have as a reader contribution is to like in the app if you're reading an article. Oh, actually, she didn't date Tom Wilson. Whatever. Like, you kind of want to point out something as a bug and have that um, just kind of flag that. And the idea is to actually have it posted to the talk page. So, it's, like, as an entryway, so that I don't actually want to rewrite this section, but I'm interested in it because I think there might be something that could be improved in it. And that kind of as a gateway to introduce the user that you know they should be interested in. Was exactly. Yeah. I mean, as Benoit was saying, that is something that was tried. There was the article feedback tool, and generally, the reaction to it, as far as I'm aware, was quite negative from editors that they thought, okay, there's a lot of feedback that really isn't useful, like, and so it ended up being turned off. And maybe there's something that could be, you know, something was missing there. Like, we don't maybe we don't care about the feedback in and of itself. We just care about the pathway for the readers to start editing, and so there's some way we can improve it there. But if we worked on Somebody who worked on that and want to take the lessons of the article feedback. Yeah, yeah. Into account. And, and I mean, there are, there are lots of there are you know various ideas that dabble in terms of micro contributions. For example, there is a tool that's currently on uh, on labs that basically presents you with a sentence that's not solid, that isn't cited, and it gives you the option to then go off and try and cite that particular sentence. And there are things like that whereby, and that may 
not necessarily a particular action. But for example, like, okay, there is a sentence that's uncited. We may be able to find ways of actually providing suggested citations and then having them human checked before them being automatically added. And that kind of stuff could be, you know, done. So then there is definitely room for allowing that sort of entry level contribution. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a whole swathe of things that can be done in terms of what you're on on a mobile phone because obviously mobile is is not a, it is it is still very immature and in relative in comparison to that how it's used uh, and that strives from both the way that people edit and the way that you know, for example in fundraising the way that people contribute uh, in, in the fundraiser it isn't as mature a platform and trying to find the ways that people actually want to interact with that is going to be key um, and given the way that our traffic is, is you know transferring from desktop onto mobile and on and off is more mobile heavy more than 50 percent that will become the standard and eventually you know, desktop will be relegated to um, you know much more significant amounts of traffic but the trouble is is that most of most of the editing is done on desktop so we are going to have to get smarter about how we engage our readers in terms of bringing them onto um, mobile and being able to contribute and edit via the mobile platform. Um, so we're at time. I'm amazed that people actually managed to keep talking. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, people who have had my back of my head for an hour. Um, and I, I will follow up with people in this room, um, and I will, there are other people who have expressed interest who are not necessarily in this room as well, who again, are very much interested in being able to take this forward, and it is a big project, and there will be a case of identifying what does and does not need to be done immediately, and what can and cannot be done with the resources that we have. Um, but that's the latest of the year, so thank you all, thank you for being very patient. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, online people. I don't even know what I need to do. Yeah, they were seeing if you were aware you. Stop streaming. Okay, there's there is still some feedback from RC, oh. which about the session. The first one is that was capitals also. And Very kind. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Also known as oh, thank you. Well, you know, thank you, people. You're very kind. I don't agree with you, but you are very kind. <laughs> right, goodbye.